you say make the crumpets in a frying pan, but we have got a pancake maker. Would that work as well? well I don't know. What is a pancake maker? Uh, <laughs> it's clear. Oh, yeah, that's fine. That's, that, that looks like it'll be perfect. Yeah, no, it, I thought it would be good uh, to use, so uh, perfect. Yeah, looks fine to me. An electric frying pan. Yeah. That's lovely. Good morning, Tom. How are you? I'm well, thanks. Yeah, very well. How's the Cornwall? Sun is out. Uh, yeah, the, well, I think probably most of England, the sun is out, which is a welcome change. <laughs> I bet it is. I bet it is. Are you still in Mexico, Jane? Sorry, I haven't been here for a couple of weeks. Uh, no, I'm up in Toronto. The, um, the government of Canada closed all the flights between Canada and anywhere fun basically, <laughs> so that Canadians couldn't escape the winter. And um, I <laughs> felt everything that was going on that I didn't want to not be able to get back here. Um, so I could have flown via the US, complicated. You know, now you have to go into a hotel for three days, complicated. And I just felt with everything going on, it was not the time to not be able to come back. So I decided, literally my dad and I were talking on the phone in, on the 30th of January or the 29th of January and the news came over the wire. And so I said, oh, I'll call you back. And within an hour, I had a COVID test. I booked a flight and I packed a bag with like a bikini and a ski jacket because I, <laughs> I don't know how long I'm going to be here or indeed kind of away from, away from home. So. I'm up in Canada. Oh, I've lost where, your sound, but uh... yeah, yeah. So it's um, it's beginning to melt. Tomorrow's the first of March. The bulbs are up a tiny bit, and the snow is going. So it's rather cheerful. Now we have some new people. Simon Olsberg. We have not met you before. I, yeah, I, um, I just found out about this from your podcast you did with oh, uh, on Rise Up. So I. You sent out an email about it. I thought I'd show up. Very Great. Excited. Where are you located, Simon? I'm in uh, Massachusetts, outside of Fantastic. Boston. Fantastic. Well, I'm from the UK originally. You might be able oh, to. Oh, that's know. we can hear that. Okay. So there are lots of people from the UK on the call, and Jenny yep. is just joining us. She's also from the Tom is from Cornwall. And I've got Michelle and Nikki, sisters from London. Yes. Sabine is looks like you're in Brighton, Bean. Yes, I am. Sabine's in Brighton. Carolyn is wearing a Cardi. She must be cold. Carolyn is in <laughs> Toronto. And Iru and Sylvia, we haven't met you either. How are you? Very well, thank I you. I did go to one weeks ago. Um, I'm... Mm, somebody does not have great Wi-Fi connection, which can happen also to me, as we know. Um, so yeah. we'll just we'll just wait one more minute and then we'll get going. So two things. I thought we would do two things today, only because the crumpets are really rather dull once they're in the frying pan. I mean it's kind of fascinating maybe one time to watch to see if the bubbles are gonna open up, but after that it's it's really rather boring. So I thought what we would do is we would shape baguettes whilst the crumpets are frying. Um, because baguettes are quite fiddly, you have to kind of, you know, weigh out the dough and then you let it sit around and then you shape them and then you let it sit around. And so I need to I go and get my dough from another room. <laughs> Marvelous. Go get your dough. So, okay, it's five past. So we will start. Welcome, everybody. So nice to see you. Clinton Jude, good to see you again. Clinton Jude sadly got the time wrong last week. So they were okay. absolutely okay. there. At the wrong no. time. Right. Very Two sad. questions. Okay, so hang on one second. Hang on. What we need is for everyone to put themselves on mute. Everybody, please put yourselves. I'm gonna mute everybody. Actually, there you go. Okay. It's all gonna be muted. Whoop. Now, if you have a question, you please do take yourself off mute to ask the question because there's too much background noise. So somebody I know had a question. That person can take themselves off mute, please, and you can ask your question. Maybe they don't know how. Sorry, um, I had two questions, actually. 
Um, I think my crumpet dough is probably a disaster. I don't see bubbles. And secondly, I will try and make them anyway. How many are you going to do? Because I've only got four crumpet rings. Well, that's all right. I've only got four crumpet rings too. And most, most people will only have four maximum and they all only fit into a frying pan. So we're going to do them in stages. We'll do four at a time. So that bit's fine. Okay. Um, crumpet dough, did it, the question is, did it have bubbles before you stirred in the baking powder? Because the instruction was to let it sit around and then, so it didn't ever have bubbles. No. Well, okay, that wrong. might be, a, if you really mixed everything together, room temperature, water, yeast, blah, blah, and nothing happened after a couple of hours, you might not have a uh, live yeast. You may want to check the sell by date on the yeast because all else being equal. It's in date. <laughs> then I can't explain it, sadly. Can't oh. explain it because if it's okay, been hanging around. You may well be right. I'll chuck it and use a different packet. Maybe, yeah. but I don't know. Bake, so just fry but them. I use the same yeast for the baguettes. <laughs> okay. Well, well, the question is, did the baguette dough rise, Sylvia? Um, <laughs> no. <laughs> right. So if the baguette I think that's, dough that's a disaster rise, as well. Okay, so if the like, that hasn't risen. do not rise, you have, let me just, um, oh, I'm gonna, do you I'm know, gonna mute everybody. I just I'm gonna, I'm gonna mute everybody, I've, I've muted everybody, if the baguette dough did not rise, then you have a problem, for sure, because nothing is going to happen, however, if the, uh, hang on, please, however, if the crumpet dough didn't bubble, you know, you'll get pancakes, right, don't, don't worry too much about it, you may as well try and make them, and see what happens. But if the baguette dough did not rise, don't, yeah, throw it away. Don't bother. No, I've just realized I have made the most awful mistake. I whisked the baking powder into the baguette dough. Okay, once again, I wouldn't uh, worry too much about that. Uh, that. Okay, I wouldn't worry too much about that personally. You can, you can, that's not gonna harm your baguette dough if the yeast is alive and it rose, don't worry. You can just throw some baking powder into the crumpet dough, but a little bit of baking powder into your baguette dough is not gonna make any difference. I'm going to do it's that now. <laughs> okay, so what we should all have is if we're making- Mute again. If we're, sorry? Was there another question? Mute me again. <laughs> okay, so I'm just No, gonna... no, no, no. I'm just going to get in the way with my sound. Okay, I'm trying to figure out how to do that. Why isn't it? Oh, here we go. Okay, so everyone's muted. So if you have a question, do please unmute yourself. No problem whatsoever. Close. Okay, so if you're making baguettes, you need, this will be helpful. A couple of scrapers will be helpful. If you don't have scrapers, a spatula, okay? It can just be helpful for moving the dough around. You definitely need some more flour. You need your dough, okay? A scale is helpful for, for making breaking it into parts. Now, um, I am not, as you now know, at, uh, at home in my own bakery, so I don't have what's called a lamb. And a lamb is L-A-M-E, not L-A-M-B. And it's what is used to score or cut the top of a dough. More on that later. You can, you don't have to cut the top of a baguette if you don't want to. You don't call it a baguette, and I'll explain that in a second. But if you want to, you can use an exacto knife. You can use a pair of scissors and snip along the top. Makes it very, very pretty. A regular kitchen knife doesn't cut it. You need the thin, thin, sharp. Even an exacto knife isn't as good as just a razor. If you have an old fashioned, if you're the kind of man who shaves with an old fashioned razor with blades, they work really well. Um, so that's a couple things that can help. And you need to have a tray. This is just a cookie tray, right? A cookie sheet with a cloth down on it. Again, traditionally baguettes are laid out to rise on a very thick piece of linen. There's a modern invention, which does work super well, which is a baguette tray. And it's a metal tray with, you know, hollows in it where you lay the dough and it has holes and you throw that whole thing in the oven. And actually they work pretty well, but I did wanna teach you the kind of traditional way of, of, of shaping and letting baguettes rise. Also, A, it's traditional. B, you don't have to buy an extra special piece of equipment for your kitchen. 
Okay, so no need to buy an extra special piece of equipment. We're just gonna do it on a tray with some tea towels and flour. It's all you need. So that's the baguettes, that's what you need. For the crumpets, you need your dough into which you have beaten or whisked the uh, one teaspoon of baking powder. And you need your frying pan. If you have them, crumpet rings. If you don't, don't worry about it, okay? You'll just make pancakes, they're called pikelets. Okay, so a, an unshaped crumpet in a more of an amoeba shape is called a pikelet. You can do that. And some butter or some oil for greasing your pan. So we're actually gonna start, I'm gonna have to walk, bring you around the kitchen as we do things. So we're gonna start with the crumpet, okay? So everybody, let's start with the crumpets and you wanna turn your um, heat on your stove in, I, I'd say medium low, okay? You don't want, crumpets are really, really hilariously hard <laughs> to get right. Okay, no matter whether you have holes in your crumpets or not, they will be delicious. Okay, remember the maxim, everything is delicious, toasted, even if it's ugly. Okay, that's, that's all bread is great, even if it's ugly. We just toast it and it's fabulous. So your crumpets will be delicious. Whether or not they have holes, they will be delicious. And as I explained in the preface to the um, kind of email or to the, to the recipe, they're just notoriously tricky. The dough has to be like perfectly leavened with lots of air. You gotta have the right temperature. And really, really, I experimented many, many, many times with many, many, many recipes. And I really like this recipe. So yes, unusually, it has semolina. Um, I, I love the, the, the texture and the flavor that comes with the addition of semolina, which is just simply slightly coarser flour, okay? Slightly coarser wheat flour. Um, and I like that. Now, if you didn't have semolina <clears throat> and you used all flour, that's fine, right? You don't ever worry about anything like that. But if you did use semolina, um, I think you will like them. I think you'll like the flavor. So I have got, I'm gonna now turn this down. And what we're going to do is we're going to put them in. So here's my frying pan and it's on really medium low. Um, so I have a gas cooker here and this is not a fancy frying pan. It's just like a regular frying pan. It's a nonstick, but I never pay attention to that. And if you're using cast iron, it may take your pan longer to heat up. Now, the important thing is I'm going to put this butter here and you're looking for it to sizzle. Can you see it sizzling in the pan? It's got the little bubbles going. So this pan is ready for the crumpets because the butter is sizzling. You definitely want the butter to sizzle, but you don't want it too hot. If your pan is too hot, your crumpets will burn on the bottom before they bubble on the top. Now, ordinarily, not a problem, right? If you're doing pancakes, you just flip it over. We don't want to do that because we want to have the crumpets sitting there on one side whilst the bubbles rise and burst. And that takes about eight or nine minutes. So I've got butter in the pan. I've buttered my crumpet rings. So they're buttered, the insides are buttered. Okay, so I'm just gonna put them in. And then here's my spoon. It's, I think in England it's called weirdly a dessert spoon. But actually, I'm going to find a different one so you can see the shape of it better. Uh, here we go. Hang on. Slightly different shape. This one's slightly better. Um, okay, so, right, so if that's now, look, here is, okay, teaspoon, soup spoon. I think the English call this a dessert spoon. So that's what it is. Okay, so it's, there are the three kind of spoons. And the reason I'm telling you that is because I figured out it's one of these. That's the good amount for me. Okay, so batter. Throw it in. And then you may need to push it around. Don't put any more in. One spoon is really enough. And you want to push it around in the ring so that it fills the ring. Okay. So 
and I'm going to push the dough around on the ring because it won't spread out by itself. It's too thick. That's why you can pretty much do these as pikelets and they're pretty great. Okay. And so, and then once you've got the last one, it's dough, dough emergency. So once you've got them all in, we're gonna just leave them there and put the timer on for eight minutes. So my timer's on for eight minutes and I'm just gonna leave my crumpets there. And actually what I'm gonna do, I'm gonna tell you what I'm gonna do. We're gonna do this slightly differently. I'm gonna put them on kitchen timer for six. I'm gonna do six. I'm gonna do five, okay. Because then what we'll do is we're gonna come back to these. So now we're going to move over here, back to the land of baguettes. But before I do that, I just want to make sure that everybody's with me. Jane, can I interrupt you for a second? Yes. So for those of us that don't have a crumpet ring, can you just talk us through making a pikelet? <laughs> just, just, just pick a spoon up Same and blob it onto the pan. Yeah. Blob it into the pan. Okie okay, doke, thank you. That's all you need to do. Just block and don't don't try and roll it around or do anything. It will find its own level. Perfect. Okay, so what we're gonna do now is come back. Is everybody okay? Everybody's got their crumpets all blocked. Excellent. So now baguette dough. Before we get going on baguettes, I'm gonna show you this really beautiful picture that I drew because <laughs> I'm amazing at art. Just almost as good at art as I am at baking. This is the picture of a baguette. So in France, this, this picture has two functions. The first function is to tell you some fascinating facts about the baguette. In France, a baguette is between 240 and 310 grams by law. A baguette is between 55 and 70 centimeters by law. And a baguette has seven slashes on its top. Anything else is not a baguette. It may be called pan de campagna. It may be called um, epi. Okay. It may be called many, many, many things. It call you know in, you'll see it as French stick uh, because a baguette by law has these very precise measurements. So that's part one of this highly useful picture. Part two will come later when I explain how to make the cuts on the top, but I just wanted to show you that. So now the point about that is you probably do not have baking trays that are long enough. So a standard baking tray is the size of my handy Acme ruler, the one that we know so well and love that's 15 inches long. Um, and 15 inches is about six inches too short for the smallest baguette length. So why am I telling you this? You probably don't have a tray that's long enough for your baguettes. So don't cut the dough into four pieces because that would make four standard French size baguettes. Um, and if you wanna roll baguettes, to, you, don't, you don't have the length. So which means they'll be very fat, which means they're gonna be more just like loaves, which is fine. Okay, but what I wanna do is practice shaping baguettes with you. So instead of doing four, if you have two trays, let's do eight. If you only have one tray, do four, let the dough rest in the fridge, and then later on do four more. Okay, so you're just gonna have to work with the fact that none of you probably, myself included here, have trays that are long enough to accommodate this dough being divided into four. So we're gonna divide the dough into eight. Here is our dough, baguette dough. Rather forgiving. Now, I made my baguette dough, and you'll notice it. I'm going to turn this down now. My baguette dough has uh, a little amount of um, whole wheat flour in. 
because I had some whole wheat flour. That, by the way, would never happen in France, would not be a baguette if there was whole wheat flour. Um, but I had some, and so I put some in. Okay. Now, this dough is about a kilo. Let's just see. Uh, it's 1,200. Well, that makes it easier to divide. Okay. So what we're going to do, oops, made it go into pounds. Come on. Go grams, go grams. Okay. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna make each baguette about 200 grams of dough. One second, I don't like that. 250, I'm gonna do 250. Come on. Okay. So that'll do, 261. Okay. So what we're doing now is we're just, we're gonna move back and forth between the frying pan and the scale. And all I'm doing, okay, is, there's the um, timer, but let's just, I'm gonna do one more at, 250. Come on. There we go. That'll do. Okay. Come on back. And here are the crumpets. Now you can see the tops. I'm going to turn the pan down a little bit. You can see, can you see? I don't know, the light's not great, but the tops are still wet but the holes are beginning to form. Now, you don't want to flip them over if the tops are at all wet, because if the tops are at all wet, what happens is the dough gets sealed so it looks different and all the holes are going to close up. Now, if you can see, and I've got about, we've got about two more minutes left in our eight minutes. If you can see that the holes are really trying to form, but somehow they're just not forming. You know, the, the dough is just not bursting. The bubbles aren't bursting. I kid you not, get a skewer and burst them. And the light is not great in here. Um, but if I burst, my, mine are bursting pretty well. But if I burst a couple bubbles with the skewer and, you know, kind of pull the dough aside somewhat when you do that so that the bubbles stay open, they don't close up again. And you have to wait until your crumpets are mostly dry before that's going to even work, okay? If the, if the dough is still super wet, all that's gonna happen is that the bubbles are gonna close themselves up, okay? But I'm hoping that what you're seeing, I'm, I'm hoping that you're actually squealing with delight as you are seeing your, your kind of ghostly white sort of doughy crumpets form. And you'll also see that I can move mine around. Again, light's not great, but I can move mine around. Like right now, if I wanted to, I can take off the crumpet rings. And I think I told you that the best piece of equipment for removing a crumpet ring is a washing up glove because you have dexterity and just enough protection to move the rings. So I wanna see if I can get a better, see if I can turn this around. So you can sort of, there, okay, that's a better view with the light. So you see, nice and open, there we go, holes. And there, I just burst a hole, I burst a bubble. Let me see if I can do that again. Jane, yes. my pipelets all have like little holes on them, but they're yeah. not browned on the top. No, of course not. Neither so, are the crumpets. So I'm presuming because they're not as fat as your crumpets that they don't take as long to cook. So what, um, what's the ending situation with the crumpets so I know what to do with mine? <laughs> okay, so are your pikelets dry on the top? Um, mostly dry. Right. Okay, so hold that thought. Now I'm gonna pick a crumpet up. Mm -hmm. Do you see the bottom? Yep. Ow. Okay, I have to do that fast because <laughs> they're hot. 
Okay, bottom of crumpet. Okay, so to me, bottom of crumpet, check your the bottoms of your crumpets. My if, exactly, Michelle, they're hot. Mind your language, they're children on the call. Sorry, my, mine, are, mine are brown. Okay, so the thing is, you have a choice. What you can do, if you find that your, your, the bottoms are brown and the tops are not dry, yeah. for our next, for the next round, just turn the heat on the pan down. Because I'm gonna show you what, you can leave them here, by the way, like this one. Yeah. Because remember, you okay, can, okay, Michelle, Michelle, I need you to put yourself on mute for a second, yeah. please. So remember that your, you always toast crumpets, right? When you buy them at the store, you toast them. So the fact that they're ghostly white is, is so far so normal for a crumpet. Now, the thing is that you want them to dry out, obviously. You don't want them to be wet on the top. See, that one's still a bit shiny. It's got a wet patch right there. So you can actually leave them in the pan and they will dry out on the top. However, if your pan was too warm and therefore they're getting too brown, you, you're in a slight bind. But let me show you what happens if you flip them. Do you see that one there? So I want everyone to focus on that one. It's still a bit uh, wet on the top. And I want you to look at the texture of the dough. Look at the texture. Now I'm gonna flip it over. Okay, and just give it a few moments. This is like no big deal. Do you see how that texture changes? So in an ideal world, that's not what you want. What you want is for them to look like this. So these are now all dry. They're totally dry on the top. So you have a choice and this is why it just takes a little bit of a fiddle, which is why it's good. That's, you know, everybody only has four crumpet rings because it gives us a couple of chances to experiment with, you know, the heat in your pan and what you want. So let me take out, okay, so here's my drying, my cooling rack. So I'm gonna take these all out, okay. And I'm gonna show you, again, a little bit the difference, but it should be pretty clear. It's hard for you guys, I know it's hard to see through a camera, right? So. Here's the one that was flipped, right? And here's one that wasn't flipped. And another one, and another one. So there's some nice, see, so what happens when you flip it is it gets this kind of scab and it closes up the holes where it gets that scab. So you want, if, if your crumpet's browned, see, I'm totally fine with that. But if your crumpet's browned too much before the tops got dry, just turn your pan down, okay? Just turn the pan down, because now we have another chance. I'm gonna move these to do it again, okay? So here we are, I'm gonna turn this down. There's our pan. You, you really don't need to put more butter in because the pan's really hot by now. Throw your crumpet rings in. If you wanna butter them again, you can, but you don't have to. And I have turned my pan down ever so slightly. And we're going back back in, okay? So spreading this crumpet dough around. Okay. Oop, that one's really fat. I did way too much dough in that one. The spoonful was too big. Um, Because this, you'll get 12 crumpets out of this batter, but I'm only now gonna get 11 because one just was too fat. Oh, well. Okay, so back on kitchen timer. I'm gonna do seven minutes. Well, I'll do, yeah, I'll do seven minutes. Okay, and then we're gonna go back. I'm just gonna wash my hands, get rid of the dough. I'm gonna go back over here to our baguettes. There we go. Okay, so now I'm going to continue weighing out my dough. Is everybody cool? Let's have a little squawk from people. You can turn on your microphones and give me a little squawk. Squawk. Excellent, that's what I like squawk. to hear. Fine. Everybody's fine. Actually, Nikala, 
Yeah. Yes. How's the pancake maker working? It's doing pretty good. It's can, doing pretty can well. You, okay, excellent. Can you see how they work? I think the crumpets look pretty pretty good. Well, somebody's already eating. That looks like Sabine. Trust Sabine. <laughs> of course, I'm going to try it. So, okay. Look, wait, let me just see Dutch, the Nigella's crumpet. Wait, I need to find you. I need to scroll they through. Look good. Ooh, those look marvelous. Gosh, yeah. everybody. Those yeah. are, what, did you make a heart-shaped one? Yeah. Yeah, we've got adorable, a cookie. Adorable, adorable. Okay, those are prize winning. Okay. So going back to our dough here. Um, oh, sorry, um, you're boring. There we go. So, yeah. Uh, one. So we're just shaping our baguettes here. I might take these down. I'm, I am undecided on weight because I have. I'm faced with a situation of a new. I think. What have I got here? So I've divided the dough because I'm faced with a new tray. So I'm faced with having to kind of guess the weight. Um, that's going to be right. Okay, that's 250. I'm going to weigh them. I'm going to weigh, sorry, everybody, if I'm making you weigh and weigh, but this is a new tray for me. So I'm going to do 200 grams. And some of these were 250. So my baguettes here, that's it. 200, 200, I know that one's 200. Yeah, about, oops, go away. That one is, yeah, around 200. Okay, that's 230, so let me get rid of that. So yeah, I'm gonna make them about 200, and I think that will be about right for a fairly standard cookie sheet. And mine, as I said, with my handy Acme ruler, and I know you're all very jealous of my handy Acme ruler, um, which is only in inches. The standard cookie sheet is about 15 inches. Okay, so I've got, they're, they're all about one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. I've got seven, seven baguettes I'm gonna make. And they are all around 200 grams. Okay, next. This is where you need flour and you need clean hands with no dough. So once your baguettes are all in little, you know, floating around, they're all cut up, wash your hands because you don't want any dough on your hands. Because dough, as we know, sticks to dough. Okay, so you want nice clean hands. So you don't you don't get frustrated with this next part. Okay, so here's where you can get rid of your scale and you need your tray that's lined with a tea towel and you want the tea towel to be over the edge of the tray, okay? So see it's hanging down on one side and it's got a long side. And what you're gonna do is you're gonna take a whole bunch of flour and put it on your tea towel. Whole bunch, lots and lots of flour. Okay, because you don't want your dough to stick to this tea towel. Okay, lots of flour down. And you're also going to put some flour, not lots, but some flour, unusually, we don't always do this, on your counter. Now, let me do one and just watch for a second, and then we'll do the others together. So here's my blob of dough. And if you, if you, if you get frustrated, just flour your hands ever so slightly. Remember the objective here is not to get more flour into the dough, but it is so that the dough doesn't stick to you or the counter. Now, what you're gonna do is you're gonna gently stretch this dough out. Don't, it doesn't need to be, this isn't precision stretching. Okay, so into a bit of a rectangle. Okay, and then what you're gonna do is you're gonna take that top edge, you turn this this way so you can see a little bit better. Take the top edge. If you need to pin the dough down with one hand, that's fine. Take the top edge, stretch it out ever so slightly and you fold it halfway down, okay? halfway down. And then with your fingertips, 
just gently press that down. Okay, the next thing you do is you take this bottom edge. If you need to pin the dough down, don't press. You wanna keep the air in, stretch it down and take it up to meet that first edge and press it down. Now, this is where you may need a scraper, you may not. What you wanna do now is you wanna take this top edge and fold it right over. You might wanna put your thumbs in the middle here. Fold it right over so that the two edges now meet, okay? With your hands, sides of your hands, seal the edges. And then with the heel of your hand, seal the bottom edge, okay? That is part one. We'll, we'll do it again. And then you start to roll, okay? And a baguette does not have pointy ears. It's exactly the same diameter all the way along, okay? You wanna see if you can keep that seam where you sealed on the bottom. And we've got lots more to do, so I will do them equally in slow mode. And that now fits on my tray, okay? Okay, so we're gonna go back to crumpets, so this is good. And then what I'm gonna do, is concertina that tea towel up so that the baguette is sitting with a little fold of tea towel and then I'll put my next one here okay but let's return to our crumpets now you'll see here I'm going to turn this off um I had turned the heat down so they're a bit and I also it's less time so I what I wanted to do though was show you hang on See if I can get this like this. Okay, wait. This is... to stand here and burst the bubbles. I mean, my father thinks I'm insane. He's like, you are not seriously doing that. And I'm like, actually, yes, it's rather addictive. Um, I don't know how anyone else is feeling. Is anyone else kind of thinking that bursting the bubbles is a fun idea? Or am I the only deep weirdo here? Works for me, I like it. <laughs> That's excellent. Okay, I still think Nigella is winning the prize for the best crumpets, especially the heart-shaped one. But I'm quite into bursting these bubbles. Okay, so you see, it does, it really does take, I've set the timer, by the way, I think for six minutes. And it really does take eight to 10. Now this fat guy here, he's a problem. I have too much dough in him. He's just gonna have to sit there and be a problem. Um, so you can, see, that's why I wanted to make baguettes at the same time, right? Because just standing here, ooh, no, let me turn this around. There we go. And watching crumpets fry is a bit like watching paint dry. Mind you, they did have all those decorating shows for years on the television where that's precisely what we did, which was kind of amazing. I suppose restful, it's rather restful. So, um, what I'm gonna do is set my timer for another two minutes start because we don't need to watch those. What we do need to do is shape some more baguettes. So remember, you've got this one on a tea towel and I've concertina the tea towel. So if you look here, here's the baguette and here's a little fold in the tea towel. And I'm gonna put some more flour on my tea towel Jane, can I ask you, was that seam side up or seam side down? Um, I, uh, it's, it seems, it doesn't really matter. I tend to do seam side down. Um, right, lovely. But it doesn't really, because these are so small, 
So it's a very, very good question. So, okay, get into the habit of doing seam side up. And the reason is because what happens is that obviously the dough is gonna to continue to rise and the bubbles will not be evenly distributed throughout the dough, right? They're gonna start from the bottom and they're gonna rise. The bubbles are going to rise. Carbon dioxide is a gas, it rises. So the bubbles are not evenly distributed. The same with ciabatta. You always flip them over. So when you move the dough from the tea towel onto the actual baking tray, where you're gonna bake the bread, you want to turn them over because what that does when they bake is it evenly distributes the bubbles if you flip them. So it's, it is a great question. These are so little, it's not gonna make much of a difference, but ordinarily it does make a difference. So it is a good question. Okay. So in order to shape my next baguette, although I hear my timer is nearly going for my crumpets, but they're not ready yet. They're still damp on the top. Okay, so let's do this again. Flour your hands ever so slightly because you don't want to stick. And then gently stretch out the dough. Keep as much air in the dough, hang on. Keep as much air in the dough as you can. That's why you're just, you're stretching it. You're not squashing it down. You're just gently stretching it so that you're thinning dough membranes and elongating bubbles that are already there. So I've got my little square, I take the top, I gently pull it out and put it in the middle and tap it down. I take the bottom, I gently pull it towards me and put it in the middle and tap it down. And then it's handy, put your thumbs in the seam to flip that dough over. Use the heel of your hand to seal the bottom, the sides of your hands to seal the sides. And then you pick it up if you need your scraper move it away from you. Now, when you roll, this is really important. Don't press down. You're not pressing down when you're rolling. Remember, if, if you probably Nigella is going to be really good at this because she's probably remembers better than any of us what it's like to play with Play-Doh. Okay, you're making a sausage out of Play-Doh and you want it to be the same diameter throughout. I like my baguettes, as I say, with little blood noses. And remember that if it's thinner in some portion of the baguette, that bit will cook more quickly. You want it to cook completely evenly. You don't want to have some little burnt bit. Okay, so that one is done. I'm going to lay it in the here. And actually, it's funny, you can already see the first one, how it's risen. Okay. And I'm gonna concertina it. So there's my second baguette with the fold of the tea towel between it. Okay. Coming back to the crumpets. That one, of course, does not have holes, more fool me. That's okay. Everybody will live. Okay, here we are. Crumpets. Oh, let me just, there we go. And I'm going to get my handy washing up glove to remove the crumpet rings. And that one is still, the fat guy here teaches me not to do fat guys. Okay, but see these, I actually turn my um, pan down too much now. So these are pretty ghostly still on the bottom. So I'm actually okay leaving these in the pan for a little bit longer. Um, but you guys, if anybody's are ready, that's cool. Take them out. Mine are not quite ready. Now, if you get a sticking um, crumpet ring, all you need to do is run a knife around the outside like this. There we go. That one's, he's a super fatty, that guy. He's like twice as fat. Don't know what I was doing. So I'm gonna leave them in there and I'm gonna shape another baguette. Okay. And I learned to shape baguettes from a very experienced baker who laughed and made, probably made me do like thousands of them to get them right. 
And by the way, there are tons of ways of shaping a baguette, right? Like, you know, like anything in life, there is not one way. Okay. But this is a nice easy way. How are you all doing? Has anybody tried other than Sabine? And Sabine, tell us all, how was your crumpet? It tasted of a crumpet. It was still a bit too um, slightly, no, not finishedly done on the top, but it definitely tastes like a crumpet. Okay, so remember that when you buy crumpets at a store, you would toast them, right? And when yeah. you toast them in a toaster, there's no risk of getting that kind of scar on the top of the crumpet because it doesn't actually touch the heat source, right? It just browns from a distance. Yeah. We've had, we've had three tasters in our house already and I think they're going down well with some honey drizzled on. Oh, that's excellent. Okay, anyone else eaten a crumpet yet? Uh, I have, and I also toasted it and had it with uh, honey. And was it delicious? Yeah, it was more like a pikelet, though, because um, I don't I don't have crumpet rings. So it was, um, I think I'd probably want it to be a little bit thicker. So have to think of another way around that. <laughs> or just get some crumpet rings. Yeah. Yeah, we've tried one, just had it with some butter, couldn't even be bothered to toast it because we were too eager to eat it. It was delicious. Oh, good. Well, um, that sounds like Clint. Is that you, Clint? It's me, yeah. Clint here. Well, you know, the crumpets are in your honor because you guys wanted to do crumpets ages ago. <laughs> <laughs> and I was always resisting, but okay. I, I caved. I caved. Thank you. Thank you very much. We appreciate it. <laughs> Nothing if not, you know, receptive. Okay, how are the baguette shapes going? Who's shaping baguettes? I think okay, but um, so hard to tell. I find the rolling really yeah, hard. Yeah, and there's the... Sorry, Bean, say that again. I said I find the rolling, rolling them really hard because by that stage they're quite floury. Ah, you're, then, then are you using too much flour? Then don't put so much flour down. Yeah. If if you're not, you need it needs to do somewhat sticking in order to roll, or else they just flop around. Yeah, that's what I did. Okay. Well, just get just scrape the flour out of the way. Uh, too late. Oh, okay. Next time. Next time. Okay. My third and fourth shapes are better than my first and second. That's excellent. That demonstrates progress. So there's hope. Yes. Yes. Okay, so I am moving over here. Okay, hang on. So I'm probably behind many of you because I turned my pan down too much. It's back up again. Crumpet rings in. I don't think I'm going to get three out of here, but you never know. I might get a really skinny one. Okay. And for our newcomers, are you baking today or are you just joining us to watch, which is totally fine? Um, I'm just doing the baguettes. This is Joy. Okay, how's it going? Very well, thank you. Excellent. Yeah, I'm baking crumpets. Which, what, out with. Sorry, say that again. I beg your pardon. The Simon here, I made the crumpets or got the last batch in. They look good, about to taste one. And are you super excited about being able to make your own crumpets? Being it's been many years the... since I've had a crumpet. So oh I'm... my gosh, I... Oops, get that out of the way. Okay, so that's my final batch of crumpets. The fatty that I made means that I only have 11. So here we're back to these. Let me just shape the final two and put some more flour down on my tea towel. 
And as Sabine has rightly pointed out, it, you, it's this very interesting, um, you, you don't want your counter to be too flowery or you actually don't have the stick that you need to expand the baguette dough. It just uh, rolls around and you, it doesn't have the tension that you need for it to expand. Um, I should be able to, yeah, I can make that. But obviously if you don't have enough flour, then the dough sticks and that is a misery as well. Okay. And if you find that you're, you know, that the little ends are getting pointy, just don't roll them, right? Ease up before you get there. Okay. So here are all my little, little baguettes. And what you want to do at this point, they don't need to sit around for long, but I will cover them so they don't dry out. And they really only need, depending on the temperature of your dough, 20 minutes, maybe 30. Um, so in actual fact, because it takes a while, clear, hold on. I'm gonna put off. Okay, no idea what that's doing. Bake, I am going to put the oven on to, 450 Fahrenheit, so you want it at 230. You want it as high as you can get it, quite frankly. If you can get your oven up to two, 240, even 250, that's what you want. And you also want, in a domestic oven, to bake them close to the top, okay? So you want the rack um, quite high up in the oven. So, with baguettes, it's really hard. You, you can't really expect the baguette that you bake in a home oven to be the same as that delicious baguette you have from your memory in France. And the reason for that is firstly, the flour is different. Okay, so French flour is very enzymatic. It's a function of the, 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 the type of flour that they grow in France and how it's milled. So French flour, compared to English flour or any other flour in the world has more enzymes. And what that means is that it makes holes. Okay, it's more active. The flour is more active naturally than other kinds of flour, which means it rises in a different way. It makes many, many, many more holes in the dough because of the enzyme activity. So there is a difference. There really is a difference between French flour and non-French flour. So if you, all else being equal, you make a baguette exactly in the same way with French flour and with not French flour, you'll see a huge difference in the final product. So number one, unless somebody was able to get their hands on French flour, you, you're starting with a different product. So I certainly am using lovely, lovely Canadian flour here. Yes, it's lovely, it's organic. Yes, it's stone milled, but at the end of the day, it's not French. So it has a different protein structure it's got different amounts of protein and it's less enzymatic, okay? Thing number one. Thing number two, traditionally, traditionally baguettes are baked in either what we would understand as a pizza oven. So that's either a stone oven or it's called a deck oven where the oven itself is very shallow, right? So it's not like a big domestic oven that's, that's like half a meter. It's maybe, let's get my acne ruler out. It's not even, it's maybe, a deck is maybe nine inches. It, you know, it's, it's, it's small, decks are, decks are shallow. And so what that means is the heat is very close to the dough all around. The heat source is bottom, but the ovens are shallow. So it's very hot and the heat source, the reflected heat source is close to the dough all the way around. So that gives you that kind of lovely golden color very quickly. And um, it allows the dough to expand in a different way. It allows the crust to form very, very fast, which is why the crust is so thin, okay? The crust is very thin and very crispy because of this all round heat source. Extremely difficult to replicate in a domestic oven. 
I just don't want you to cry and be disappointed when your baguettes aren't the way you remember them in France. There are two things working against you. One is the flour that you're using and the other one is the oven that you're using. That being said, you will have, you know, a lovely, beautiful baguette shaped loaf. And so that will be nice and fun for when you are um, closed, for when you're gonna eat your lunch later or your dinner later. Um, the, they freeze well. Okay, so I, I doubt very much that there will be anything left at the end of about an hour, quite frankly. But if there is, they do freeze really, really well. Um, and the only other thing that we're going to do, oh, let me have a look at my crumpets here. Hang on. I'm gonna go back for a bit more bubble bursting just cause there we go. Okay, wait, I've, I've got some promising bubbles here, which I will burst. Okay, does anybody else have, how's everybody else doing in there? Is everybody else's crumpets kind of done? Let's, no, let's hear. Okay. Oh, good. Jen here, and I'm bubble bursting. Oh, isn't it satisfying? It's great. <laughs> so weird. Um, Jane, how can you sort of try and ensure that it's of an even surface? I mean, mine all look a bit kind of pillowy in the sense that they are wide and the bottom there at the top. Or is it just unavoidable? I'm sorry, they're white or wide? Wider. So they're... Wide they're I can't explain it. Look, it looks a bit kind of dome shaped. So the bottom is obviously flat because that's where it was with the ring, but within the ring, it doesn't rise on the side. It sort of caves a bit in. Not sure I explained this very well, but. How do you, I've just lost you. Like a mound. Yeah, like it's a bit, bit, bit dome shaped. I can't explain this very well, but. Can you see it what I mean? Nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's nice. It's not dome shaped. Nice. Perhaps I'm spoiled from the industrial ones, which are like proper, you know. Yeah, we shouldn't aim to go for Probably, yeah. Well, it's the only, it's the only thing I can relate it to, so. Yeah. Mine, mine look like that too. Okay, thank you. That reassures me. Jane, you're on mute. Could be why. Oh, there we go. So yes, perfection is found in an industrially mass-produced product. Ooh. That's what I would say. Yeah. Okay. So I think I think proper is in the eye of the beholder. Okay. So how is anyone else doing? Let's see anyone else's crumpets. I will show you. Okay. There's one of mine. I mean, I think I have a feeling the Dutch people are going to win the prize. Nigella and her dad yeah. are going to. There's my crumpet, and it is ghostly pale on the top, but I'm okay with that because I will toast it. Um, but you know, if now that it's totally dry, okay, totally completely dry, you can throw it back in the frying pan without it creating that scab, because the scab is going to be created if it's only ever so slightly damp. But if it isn't, obviously, you can, and if you want your crumpets to look right now before you toast them, a little bit more brown on the top, throw them all back in the pan face down. And, uh, and then the tops will go nice and brown. Okay, so look, those, the heart-shaped ones are just adorable. Bob, mm -hmm. how are your crumpets going? Okay. Mine were, it, mine were a complete disaster. <laughs> what, Mari? They were a disaster? Oh my God. Yeah, so so I, I don't have any crumpet lids. Uh, yeah. things, so my I crumpet mason jar. Puss and Jude looks amazing. Oh, wow. Well, well, like, I'm happy with that one. My husband yeah. said, oh, no, no, no. They told me earlier nice. that they're holding one up that they bought at MS. <laughs> 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 Okay, Jane, never mind. That one is really shaped. <laughs> Those are terrific. Everybody's are just beautiful. Wow. Oh, Mine is a lovely. Like lit. <laughs> a okay, so now, Mari, you, I know you joined a little bit late. That Mari, without a crumpet ring, that's okay. And Tom, yours are gorgeous. 
You they, just, they you just you have to make something called a pikelet, which is like a pancake. Oh, yeah. So, Mari, let's see. Oh. Yours. No, no, they, they are a, a complete disaster. Where's Simon, it? very good. Yeah, Simon's a great. Okay, now, Mari, you flipped got yours over. Did you flip it over? No, I didn't. Uh, but uh, I'll try again. I, I didn't do, uh, they stuck to the rings that I had. Uh, okay. So it's a complete disaster. Okay, okay. But, so try again. Because, yeah, because. I will. Excellent. Okay. And um, Iru, how's yours? Did you make crumpets with us today? No. No. Are you making no, baguettes? I, I just I just made baguettes. Oh, fantastic. OK. So let's see those baguettes. There's crumpet. OK, I'm just showing off one of my crumpets that I'm, you know, kind of smugly pleased yeah. with. Yeah. Yeah. Those okay, those look beautiful. Those look absolutely wonderful. Okay. Now I know that we're slightly over time. Okay, so what I want to do is I just want to explain to you about if you want to okay, I'm gonna come back to my incredible picture, this incredible picture, <laughs> which you may or may not find helpful. So if you want to give your baguettes the slashing on the top, you imagine, okay, so here's my incredible picture. Imagine, and I'll show you that on your, this is your baguette. Imagine two lines, these dotted lines here that are slightly in from the sides of the baguette. And these baguettes are very, very thin. So this isn't necessarily gonna be easy, but imagine two lines. And then what you do is you cut between those two imaginary lines and each cut, so make a cut, and then kind of imagine that you go halfway up the cut and go to the side, and that's where your next cut starts. Okay, so let me show you on, these aren't really ready, okay? But I will do my best to kind of show you, but you know, as ever, the light isn't brilliant, but here's, here's, here's a baguette here. You imagine two imaginary lines in from the edge, in from the sides, okay? Imagine that. And then what you do is you take, if you're using an X-Acto knife, I'm not gonna, you cut from one side where the imaginary line is down diagonally to the other, okay? So you make a cut that goes like that. And then go halfway up your cut and move over. And that's where your new cut starts. So all the cuts, overlap, right? So imagine you're cutting, you go halfway up and over and you start your new cut and you go down. You go halfway up and over and you start your new cut and you go down. The reason I'm not cutting is they're not ready. You go up and halfway over and you do your new cut. So that's option one, if you have an X-Acto knife or a razor. Option two, just take some scissors and snip like this. So it looks like little a little dragon, right? Little flames, little you know points on its head. Just do it, take your scissors and do a snip. Obviously it's not a snip like that. Okay, it's a snip on an angle and take a nice big snip and then snip it all the way down. And that's all you need to do. So option one is to use a razor. And as I say, exacto is okay, but it's not brilliant. Option two is to use a scissor. Now, when are these ready for the oven? It's really hard to tell. And the whole thing about slashing the top of your bread, originally, 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 when we all took our dough to the communal baker, and the communal baker was probably illiterate, we had a cut, maybe our initial, maybe one stripe, or maybe two stripes, or maybe a square. And that's how the communal baker knew it was us. So they were able to say, oh, that's Jane's mark. She's baked three loaves with me this week. That's Nathalie's mark. She's baked six loaves with me this week. So the cutting of the bread was so that the baker could charge us properly for baking our dough, okay? That's the original reason, okay? Now, there's another reason, which is if you slash your bread, it controls the cracking in the oven. So when bread hits the oven, it does an oven spring, it jumps up with the heat of the oven, 
and it can, as we've seen before, it can, it can crack or it can break. Actually, physically cutting your bread controls that, so it breaks where you want it to break. That's reason number two. Reason number three, it creates more crust. So people who like crust, if you slash it, you have more crust. Reason number four, it's, it has been decided that it is pretty or it has been decided that it is the right thing to do. Now, a lot of people hate it. So you can get these spectacular loaves exploding in the oven. And by the way, it's only ever gonna work with white flour. Um, I, I, I'm like, I don't get it because that, if I'm gonna cut a slice of it and maybe break it up and have it with soup, that's okay. But if I'm gonna try and make a sandwich, those huge exploding loaves are fairly useless <laughs> when it comes to making a sandwich. So at the end of the day, your bread has to have a function that you want for it. And if the function is beauty, go to town learn how to slash it, learn how to stencil it, learn how to sprinkle flour of it, go to town. I am not a cake baker because I don't have the patience to decorate, right? I've got Jenny on the call who's incredible at decorating. She's made lizards and football pitches and the whole nine yards. I, I can't. So it's very rare that I will be bothered and I would never do very intricate, oh, it looks like a leaf, it looks like a city. People who do it, it's incredible. I don't because I don't have the patience for it. And the reason that the baguettes are cut with six slashes is because that's what it's done in France, okay? By law, they have seven slashes. You don't have to slash your bread. You never have to slash your bread. You do not have to become an expert at exploding loaves of bread. If you want to, terrific, right? That's something you can work on, but it is not necessary and it is not the indicator of a good or more professional or more artisanal loaf of bread. 100% no, okay? So that's a really important thing to take away, which is the slashing is difficult. It takes a lot of practice. It's not necessary, okay? So what we're gonna do when your baguettes are ready, it's very, it's like anything else. Um, give them a poke with your finger. You want the dough to slightly fight you because it indicates that there's still life in the yeast but you also want that the, the place where you poke it to fill out, right? You want the little indentation. And it's very difficult to show you in a camera. There's just not enough light. But I have a quick question. Uh, yeah. Are we, are, uh, do you bake these on a baking sheet or directly? I have a pizza stone actually. I was thinking of putting them on the pizza stone. You can put them directly on a pizza stone, okay? And um, for anyone else, you want to get a baking tray. You want to line it with nonstick parchment. Okay, so I'm going to do that. Um, so would you, you would still move your breads then, your baguettes? I'm so sorry? You would still move them. They're oh, on yeah, the... yeah, yeah, yeah. You, okay. you can't put the tea towel in the oven. Okay, yeah, yeah of course. <laughs> Otherwise, so they'll Hang on. Okay. Yeah, you have to move them. Now, moving the baguettes takes a little bit of nerve because um, they, they seem so fragile. But don't worry, okay? Don't worry about it. Um, Mari, you're going to have to, I, I'm not there with you, so figuring out how to move it onto the um, pizza stone is something I cannot do right now, but I can do it with you later. So what I'm going to do Okay, I'm going to slightly unconcertina my tea towel and literally pick it up and move it and flip it over. Okay, just don't worry about it. And then when you move it over, you'll, it'll probably be slightly in a snaky S shape. That's okay. Just use your hands to get it back into a nice shape. Okay, so camera not ideal open up my tea towel, pick it up, move it, flip it over, and just get it nice. So this, by the way, I can only bake four. So, I mean, I'm not gonna bake all of these on a single tray. So I'm gonna pick it up, move it, flip it. Okay. And here, this one, cause these are, they, they, don't, they don't need long once they've been shaped. Pick it up, flip it, okay. 
Now these, I'm just gonna let them hang out for a moment while I show you. Okay, so there they are. Okay. And I am going to, I need to use the scissors because that's super nice. I'm just gonna do this. See? Seven? Yeah, I think it fits. Okay. And if you wanna use um, an exacto, it's not gonna be brilliant. It's not, you know, and you have to be brave with an exacto knife. It's not for the faint of heart. Okay, and I'm gonna do another one with scissors. And see, slightly lift that up. Okay, and then I'm gonna put this in the oven. Okay, so that is our class today. And I'm sorry that we're slightly over time, but we were very ambitious doing two different kinds of bread. And I hope that everybody had a lovely time. Please send me photos of your gorgeous, gorgeous crumpets and of your gorgeous, gorgeous baguettes when they come out of the oven. Um, thank you newcomers for joining. It's such a pleasure to welcome you. We're gonna take a little break um, just cause I need a little break. <laughs> <laughs> uh, having, having done this now for nearly a year, can you imagine? It's been nearly a year. Maybe what I'll do is I'll come back for our one year anniversary. So if anybody has, um, in a couple weeks time, let's have a one year anniversary. And if anybody has ideas for what they would like to do on our one year anniversary, send me an email. Okay. Thank okay. you very much, Jen. Thank you, Thank you, Thank you. See you next Thank week. You. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Thanks. Bye. Thank you. Bye. 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 Seven, ten. Wow. Don't shrink as well. <laughs> okay. Bye, everyone. Bye. Bye. Bye.